Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay. I'm the designer of Eight Gods, and I wanted to give you a quick overview of the rules so you could learn how to play. This is played with a special deck of cards. It's a 48 card deck, and if you're familiar with Sleeping Gods by Ryan Lauket, then you should know this card deck exists in the Wandering Sea world. And because there are eight main gods in that world, this deck of cards has eight suits. Now, please know this is completely placeholder art. Ryan is doing absolutely beautiful card art for the game. This is just placeholder for purposes of playtesting. All right, so you can see the gods are zeros, and then there are the numbers two through six. The lore reason for that is uh, in in the eight gods, uh, in, the, in the Wandering Sea, uh, ones are often considered unlucky. So there are no ones in the deck. All right, so I'll shuffle up. I think the easiest way to teach the game is to just show a sample hand. Now, normally what would happen is everybody would obviously have their cards private in their hand, but for purposes of this, I will play a two-player game with, with, cards, with cards face up. Now, I will note that on Tabletopia, things are a little slower. You can play a game of this probably in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes maybe. Um, with more players, often there's a little bit more thinking time, but the game often lasts fewer rounds. So that's why. All right, let's look at this. Let's look at this hand. The game is played over several rounds, and each round um, you have the deal, obviously, and then there's this small gift phase where you're gonna pass a card and whoever passes the lowest card scores four points. Then there's a play phase, which I'll explain later, then you score your hand, all right? Uh, and then possibly some gods go to sleep. The game ends when all of the gods are asleep, depending on the size of the game. In a two-player game, the game ends when you only have six gods asleep. All right, so let's look at this hand. Um, without going into too much detail, I'm gonna say that this person will choose to pass this two. We'll keep it secret. So right now that they pass that. And obviously there's some strategy to that. There's some reason why you might wanna pass that, but we'll get into that later. I just wanna do a quick demo. So this person, hmm, they'll look at their hand. Yeah, I think they'll go ahead and pass a two also. So they both ended up passing a two and then they reveal it. Boom, boom. Okay, so in this case, uh, they're each gonna score points. I guess we'll make them a slightly more different color. We'll give them blue. So this person scores four points, and then this person scores four points, and then they both take these cards into their hand. All right, now knowing that those cards have been passed, maybe they were gonna do something different. Now what's interesting is this person now has, and you saw this was random, um, but this person now has a run and for purposes of the game, this, this is probably, it's probably better to keep this together. So this time they're gonna pass this one. Now they don't know that's coming. Um, this person wants to score their points again. They're gonna go ahead and pass this one back. All right. So in a two player game, you end up passing and then passing back. In a bigger game, you end up passing around the circle and we see what they pass. All right, now this time, this person passed the lower and the other person did not. So this person scores four, yellow scores four, blue does not score anything, but, but uh, yellow ended up with a six. All right, so now this is the play phase. Let me explain the play phase. The way it works is, let's say yellow is dealing. Yellow can play any number of cards of the same rank from their hand, and the goal is to get rid of all your cards. The first person to play all your cards wins. Um, if you've ever played a game called The Great Dalmudi or similar games, uh, this uh, play uh, sequence will make sense to you. So this person will play, will start off with a five. And now when it comes over to the next person in order, you can either play a lower number, so like a three, or you could play a single two if you wanted, or you can play any pair or any triple. So in this case, this person may jump to the, maybe a pair, pair of twos they could jump to if they wanted to keep playing, or they could play three fives if they wanted to. Strategically, it's probably best for this person to play a pair of twos 
and now it goes back to this person. They could either play, yellow could either play a lower pair, like a pair of gods, pair of zeros, or any triple. But in this case, they can't, or they choose not to, and they say pass, and it goes back to blue. And now blue has, because uh, everybody passed to them, it restarts. And so now they can play anything they want. They could play the three, and now this person will play a two, yellow will play a two, and now I don't have a single card that's lower than a two, but blue does have a triple, so they play these three, and now they're out of cards, and they score their eight points. Uh, the scoring is first person to get rid of all their cards scores eight, next person scores four, next person scores two, and then everybody else scores zero in the play phase. If you're playing a two-player game, typically the, the common etiquette is just whoever went out first scores four, and everybody else scores zero, because the difference between eight and four is four, so you just score four, and the other person scores zero, it's fine. All right, so it turns out they're tied. Obviously, there are lots of different ways to score points. Um, the pass, or the gift phase, and then the play phase, and now the scoring phase. So let me explain now how hands are scored. All right, there are two ways to score points. Let's score blue's hand first. There are two ways to score points in your hand in the scoring phase. One is runs. So if you have a run, for you score either four points for a two card run, or nine points for a three card run, or 16 points for a four card run, however many cards you have, that number squared. So they're gonna score four points for this run. So we just tend to score runs first, so they just go ahead and score four points. And then they score one point for every unique eight that they have in their hand, cards that add up to eight. So this five plus three, this five plus three, this five plus three. So they, this, this hand all together has three eights in it, and so they score three more points, okay? So, so that hand was worth a total of four plus three, seven points. All right, now over here, this person also has a run, so they're gonna score four points for the run. And then we count the additional eights. We have five plus three is one. And then we also have six plus two and six plus two. So this person also happens to have three eights. So this was just random. Uh, I wasn't necessarily gonna be a tie, but the way everybody ended up playing it, it ended up being a tie game. Um, and then you pass the deal to the next person and you shuffle up. I wanna show what would happen if somebody had gotten a god I'm going to just maybe draw a few cards and see if I can get a god. All right, so let's say this person, instead of having this four, we'll put this back in the deck. This person had, I'm going to put all these back in the deck to avoid distraction, though I end up talking over this. Okay, so let's say this was their hand. All right, they still have the run. We already scored that. They still have this six and two and this six and two and this five and three, but they also now have this zero. And so you can do six plus two plus zero. You could do this six plus two plus zero, and you can do this five plus three plus zero. So if you end up with a zero in your hand, then you would end up with effectively, they would have gotten three more points because they had a total of six unique eights instead of just three unique eights. Now notice zeros are the lowest, and so also maybe you'd wanna pass this during the small gift phase. And so there's a little bit of tension there. Do you wanna pass it? And when you play during the play phase, zeros are the lowest. So there's some interesting decisions around that. Now, at the end of the round, if you have the matching two for the god, then you claim this god, you put it to sleep, you set it aside, it does not go back in the deck, and you're gonna score points at the end of the game for this god. If you don't have the matching two in your hand, meaning the two of Zakra, then it ends up going into the middle and it stays face up out of the deck. The thematic thing is this god is now awake and anybody in a future round who gets a two will be able to put the god to sleep and then it goes away. So that's, so that's how the game ends. Uh, once six gods are asleep in a two player game or seven in a three player game or all eight in a four or more player game, that's when the game ends. On average, there's no guaranteed exactly set time when it will end, but on average, it takes about, about half an hour to play regardless of the number of players.
At the very end of the game, once the right number of gods are asleep, you shuffle up the deck, you flip over one more card, and that's how many points each god is worth. That's the game. Please feel free to contact me on BoardGameGeek or in the comments if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Also remember, this art is totally not final, and Ryan is making really beautiful art for all the cards.